Have you ever wondered if the food you're eating may be causing your acne? It very well may be. My name is Selena from Wholeness Campaign. I make videos all about healing your gut and ultimately your body, detoxification and non-toxic living. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a video. Today, I'm gonna break down the ultimate acne detox diet if that's even a thing. Exactly what you should be eating if you're looking to clear acne, the best foods out there really, which some people may think are controversial, give you a sort of acne diet detox plan, as well as share exactly the foods that you should be avoiding if you're looking to clear up your skin. If you really want that glow, I'm gonna tell you exactly which food groups cause acne and give you really a step-by-step -step guide for clearing up acne for good not just temporarily. So let's jump in. So I wanna start by giving a baseline of why you actually have acne in the first place. People may not have told you this, but acne is actually a detox reaction. It's actually your body pushing out toxins through your skin. So in an ideal body, your liver is filtering out toxins. But unfortunately, we live in a day and age where we are overloaded with toxins. Like there's something like 10,000 new chemicals that are made every single year, which really puts a strain on the liver. Now, if the liver can't filter toxins properly, it's actually going to push out toxins through your skin. It's your body's wise design because if it didn't push it out through your skin, then it would go into other tissues and it would become problematic. Actually, your skin is your body's kind of like last level of defense against toxins. So when it gets to the skin level, you actually really wanna pay attention. Taking a good look at what you're eating is key here because what you're eating may actually be adding to your toxic load. We don't wanna be intaking toxins, contaminants, metals from our food because that's going to, again, burden the liver, burden the skin, and cause this kind of reaction that we're trying to avoid here. This is just a disclaimer, but toxins can actually come in through a variety of methods, not just foods. I will link my video above and in the description box on personal care products and how to detox your personal care products because that can be a huge contributor to things like acne because again, it's burdening the body with toxic overload. You'd be surprised to know how much chemicals are actually in some of these personal care products. But let's start with foods that you want to avoid. Again, a baseline here. The reason that acne happens is because of toxic buildup in the liver and your body pushing toxins out through the skin and or your body compensating for the toxins by increasing pathogens or yeast that function as the cleanup crew for those toxins, but also cause these symptoms. Again, toxins are the root cause of all of this, but what ends up happening is yeast in the body. So pathogenic bacteria, if you kind of heard the idea of like probiotics versus pathogens or good bacteria, bad bacteria, the bad bacteria are actually doing something here. They're cleaning up the toxins in the body. But what happens when they do that is they grow, you've fed them. And so a part of this process of getting rid of acne is going to be to starve out those pathogens. We want to get rid of their food source and we also don't want to be feeding them with the foods that we're eating. So number one, you're going to avoid sugar. Sugar feeds pathogens. This also includes fruit. So some of you may be already noticing that you're sensitive to fruit. Some of you may not be. The first thing that I would cut out in general would be just processed cane sugar. I would also probably cut out, you know, erythritol and xylitol and all those other fake sugars. But really starting at a baseline if you're cutting out the processed sugars. You're also going to want to cut out grains. Grains feed yeast as well. So this is things like breads and pastries and donuts and even oatmeal or rice or quinoa. You're going to want to cut out these grains because these are A, highly inflammatory and potentially causing some inflammation, but B, they are also food for the pathogens. So if we're trying to bring back balance, which is the ultimate goal here, you're going to need to limit or completely cut out grains. Again, this is not forever, but if you are looking to heal acne and really restore your skin and your microbiome, this is really how you do it in a sustainable way. And the next big food group here is going to be processed foods. The main reason for that is that they often contain toxins, metals, contaminants, all of the things because you don't really have control over what gets thrown in it, what it's cooked in, and that can all, again, add to the toxic burden. In addition, they're most likely going to be cooked in seed oils. Seed oils are something else you really want to be avoiding if you're trying to clear up your skin because that seed oils damage the gut lining. They are not easily absorbable. They cause the damage that ends up causing the ripple effect of the microbiome damage, the imbalance, the toxins 
being pushed out through the skin, all of it, seed oils are a piece of that puzzle. If you're feeling lost here and overwhelmed, I do a whole video on the full GAPS diet, which is a lot of what these principles are based around. That's really what took me into a deep dive of healing my gut, restoring my microbiome. It actually has caused me to over time not get any acne, knock on wood, or very, very limited acne. If you're interested in taking this step further, I will link that video up above and in the description box so that you can kind of take a look and evaluate if a more radical diet change might be for you. Again, so avoiding these foods is going to calm the yeast in the body. It doesn't quite address the reason why the yeast is there in the first place, which we'll get to here in a minute, but it's a good starting place because it's going to lessen the stress that's going on your skin. So what are you going to eat? Let me rattle off five of my best solutions here. The first is going to be meat stock. I know you guys were all expecting me to say juice. No, juice is not the first thing I would do. Meat stock is the first thing I would do. Meat stock is really going to heal the source of the inflammation, going to heal that gut lining, sealing it in from the leaky gut, which again is what's causing all this problem, and assist in bringing that gut lining back into balance. A healthy gut lining is actually going to be able to process toxins on its own. It's not going to be putting so much of a stress on the liver and on the skin. This really is top priority number one, hands down. This is what you need to be focusing on first. It's repairing the tissue. Meat stock is made with meaty bones, which has connective tissue, cartilage, skin, all the nutrients from the skin is actually going to work to repair your skin. If you need a full guide on how to do that, I do have a whole video where I talk about exactly how to make meat stock start to finish if you're just beginning, just starting out. So I will link that in the description box and right up above here if you're interested. Number two is probiotics. So this is a funny one because you actually might notice that as you increase probiotics, your skin may get worse before it gets better, and that is actually part of the detox reaction, so hang in there. But if you are just starting out and you just wanna take a pill from the store, go ahead. There are plenty of very affordable ways to make your own homemade probiotics, which I've mentioned here on my channel before, and I'll link a video above on how I do that, but really the homemade probiotics are gonna be the best hands down the most most therapeutic the most healing to the gut lining uh, and really replenishing those microbes is going to help to bring the yeast back to balance you don't want to completely like eliminate yeast altogether because again they act like the cleanup crew and they are going to be working for you but you want to bring them back to balance and by adding in beneficial microbes you're bringing it back to balance so again you could do fermented brines you could do a pill from the store just do something just do something it's anything is going to be better than nothing. If you need a probiotic recommendation, I'll link one in the description box below. I've had them on my link tree for a while, but if you're interested in ones that I would recommend that have as minimal fillers and additives and crap as possible, I'll link that below for you guys. Number three is going to be juicing. No, so again, I'm not against juicing. I just think that it's not the first thing that I'm going to be doing because you really need the building blocks that meat stock offers before you do all this cleansing work. Carrot juice, celery juice, cucumber juice, whatever vegetable juice you really want to make. Kind of watch how your body reacts. I personally prefer something like carrot juice. I might add a little bit of celery or beet in there. Try to steer clear of fruit juices. You're going to want to like stick to the vegetable juices. And if you're using beets, don't use too many because again, you're wanting the sugar content to be low because like we said earlier, sugar feeds the yeast. Juices are going to be a great way to detox your liver and really relieve the stress that's going on to your skin. Number four is herbal teas that support the liver. So milk thistle, something like dandelion root or ginger, even chance of piedra is something that I've taken in the past. My husband does for liver support. It's supporting your body processing these toxins so that your skin doesn't have to. And number five is going to be any kind of binder. I am partial to the zeolite and I do have a link in the description if you're interested in trying that out. There are powdered versions and spray versions, but all of these healing foods are going to ultimately potentially release toxins into the body. So you're going to be wanting to bind up those toxins as they're being processed and binders are a really helpful way to kind of get started doing that. Yeah, it's kind of an important piece, especially if you're doing any kind of dramatic dietary changes. Ultimately, the optimal diet for acne is anything that really addresses the toxicity level and the yeast imbalance. The full GAPS diet is a great starting point if you're looking to really go deep and address these root issues. But if you're not ready for that, I totally understand. I did create a video all about the best foods that you can start to incorporate into your diet if you're trying to heal your gut, 
but you're not quite ready to make a big shift yet. But let me know how it goes in the comments. I'm really interested if you see any improvements. I know plenty of people who have seen improvements on their skin by detoxing with food, using food as medicine and really supporting your body with food first. I really believe in that food first approach, you guys. If you got any value out of this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It is my passion to walk alongside people as they heal and grow. It inspires me and hopefully brings encouragement to you. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.